Let's draw a QR code and see if it works with an abstract pattern. Well, hello there, I'm Detroit. As I just said before the intro, today we're drawing a QR code. That's it. That's the whole video. Thanks for watching, like, comment and subscribe. Okay, but seriously, we are drawing this. Key point I should mention, I will not tell you what this QR code redirects to, okay? You have to watch the entire video and try it yourself to see what website it goes to. Because yes, it does indeed work. And that's a relief. Can you imagine spending 2 hours making a very small and intricate pattern in the shape of a QR code for it not to work at the end? Because that's the thing, right? It won't work until the very end. Until the last square is complete. So it's kind of a gamble to make this drawing. Spoilers, of course it works. I wouldn't have uploaded this video otherwise. The QR code works fine, and it's not a link to this video, that much you can be sure of. I kinda wanted to, but my dumb brain then realized I couldn't turn the link to this video into a QR code before I made the video, and hence the drawing. That's not how causality works. Let's get into how I made this drawing. The paper I'm using is from a Rodia pad, that is A4 format with a 5mm grid. So two squares are 1cm. For you imperial unit people, it's like half the width of a slim hot dog. At first I wanted each square of the QR code to be 1x1cm, one one but simply put, it was impossible with the paper pad I have. A4 format is 21x29.7, and the QR codes of this genre I'm drawing are 29 squares long. So I cut it in half. And I also literally cut the paper into a square. The next step of the process, that I did off camera of course, was to painstakingly copy the QR code pattern with pencil on the square paper, making sure I don't make any mistakes in copying the pattern. I made a dot with pencil on each square meant to be filled, and I drew the outline of all the shapes the squares were making. That's important, because when I'm making the doodle pattern with the fountain pen, what you're watching right now, it's hard to think of the overall shape. Had I not done the pencil sketch, I would 100% have made mistakes. Just thinking of the pattern I'm drawing takes all my concentration. Or rather, it doesn't, since I'm doing it mindlessly. But there are definitely some points I kind of forgot what I was doing, what my goal was. And at the last second I was like, wait, stop, here's the pencil line. I almost blew it. It's that kind of thing. The process is so simple, but for some reason it's hard to do. I'm not gonna lie, the whole idea of drawing a QR code was just for the sake of posting it to Instagram later. It will be up by the time this video goes public, on my insta at b 3 sd I really want the people there to see my drawing and be overwhelmed by curiosity. I hope they can't help themselves but to scan the code and end up where I want them to end up. It's a fair game, I spend time on it so they can at least do that. And so can you at the end of this video. So that's for my main Instagram account, and the Inc account, that's at detroit underscore Inc, We'll post it a bit later. Yeah, if you didn't know, I have an account just for the ink drawings. I'm currently going through the process of uploading a picture every single day. Turns out, in 3 years of making drawings for internet, I have accumulated a ton of abstract ink drawings, and so now I'm posting all of them regularly. Eventually, I will run out, in like 2 months I think at this rate, and then I will only post when I make new ones. Like duh, I need to make new ones to post them. Anyway. I really hope you can see the pattern I'm using. It's a mix of lines and circles to fill the squares, or mostly fill them. The idea was to make the pattern dense enough so that a QR scanner would pick up on it, but still light enough so it doesn't look just like colored squares. I think the idea is fun. I'm glad I had it, even though I'm pretty sure others have done it before. So that's the whole story of this QR code drawing. On a completely different topic, I was reminiscing about my childhood the other day. Not that I'm very old, mind you, I'm only 26. Well, technically I'm a few billion years old since I saw the creation of the universe, but let's say I'm 26, so I'm not old. But still, childhood seems so far away. Look at what I'm doing now. Doing a PhD in quantum physics is a thing, but more importantly, I'm making videos for internet. When I was a kid, it was far from even being a thing. I'm pretty sure every generation says this, but I really think my generation is as close as you can get to the limit between two eras. When I was a kid, I would go to the woods after school to play with my friends by building tree houses and fighting each other with sticks. Like, it was normal, we didn't have smartphones. Let's look at it another way, 
I had three PC games when I was a kid and one of them was on a floppy disk. Granted, it was already near the end of the floppy disk era, but I used floppy disks. I used CD-ROMs after that and now it's all about internet and downloads. I don't even know if you can still buy PC games on disk, like physical disks or CDs. My computer doesn't even have a CD slot. I lived through all that, but the internet and smartphones and constant access to that technology has developed at the same time I did, so I'm not like my parents who are overwhelmed by some parts of it. My generation is the only generation that is old enough to have used floppy disks and yet can use a new phone intuitively because we grew with them. Anyway, I went on a long tangent just there, but the thought that sparked it all was how weird it is for pseudonyms and handles to have become normal. Internet celebrities are now known by pseudonyms and not names. Isn't that freaking crazy? Look at huge content creators. Just to name a few, PewDiePie, Markiplier, ProZD, and also the likes of GeoWizard, Sam Dozart, Grand Line Review. These are just a few random creators I like the content of. Well, none of them are names, they are all handles. Pseudonyms have always existed, for writers and musicians for example, but now everybody uses them without batting an eyelid. We are now in an era where it's completely normal to be called by a nonsense pseudonym we chose when we were barely teenagers. It feels so impersonal and strange. I mean, it's one of the points. I am Detroit because I don't want my name to be public. But there is a number in the middle of my handle and nobody finds it strange in the slightest. Also, as impersonal as it may be to have handles like we have, in some way it is much more personal than a proper name. First off, you don't choose your own name, but you choose your own handle. Secondly, everybody shares the same name. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Why are the first name possibilities so small? Your first name is supposed to be your identity. Your name is how people know you by, and yet you have to share it with thousands of other random people. Like John Smith, it is you. That is who you are, and who you have always been. But so is the case for the gazillion others called John Smith. At least your handle is by definition unique, since when you create it on any platform, you can't use somebody else's. Sure, you might be forced to pick Daenerys Targaryen 625489, but that string sequence, that sequence of numbers and letters, are yours, and solely yours on the platform. So yeah, it's weird how normal it has become in our human world to give ourselves crazy names and have everybody use them normally. But maybe it's not a bad thing. I talked on this topic for longer than I did the drawing. Sorry about that. Nah, scratch that. I'm not sorry, it was my plan all along. It is time for you to scan this QR code and subscribe. I'm Detroit, I'll see you on the other side. Bye!